58,000 pounds of hamburger has been recalled due to possible E. coli contamination. Let's discuss. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Coffee Ranch with Dano. Today we are drinking the Joffrey's Coffee again. It is really good coffee. Um, it's free here where we're staying, so that is pretty good. Hope to bring some home with us when we leave here in a couple days. If you have to hit pause on this video to get your coffee together, have some coffee with us. It's going to be a lengthy discussion. Another event in our whirlwind events that seem to happen pretty much daily now. 58,000 pounds of hamburger, ground beef, has been recalled. Has been recalled. Um, reading from today's website here, um, there's a bunch of different articles on this. This is the one that I felt had all the information listed that is relevant. Um, they start off here on, sep on September 15th. The USDA put a bulletin on their website. I did check their website too, but there's a lot of different numbers if you want to check to see which ones were recalled. I recommend checking out the USDA website. I'm not going to go over all of those now, but I would definitely be cautious and uh, make sure you check some of the numbers and the dates that they were made and when the, the date of expiration to make sure that yours is not included. So American food groups based in Wisconsin discovered that a sample batch of beef tested positive for Shiga toxin producing E. coli. The products were produced on August 14th, 2023 and sent to Georgia, Michigan and Ohio wholesalers. So if you are in Georgia, Michigan or Ohio, you want to check this. It was uh, the hamburger that was produced on October 14th, 2023. And I just noticed something. This was the same time, the same exact day that Clorox had their um, cyber attack, August 14th, 2023. So this happened, I guess, on the same day. That's kind of weird. Uh, we just did a video on this the other day. Make sure you're subscribed down below so that you can catch all of our daily news breaks and all of our shopping trips to the stores. We focus a lot on trying to help everyone save money in all the different grocery stores in a world where it's hard to save money on food these days. But they go on to talk about the, um, the AFG or American Foods Group, uh, which does business as Green Bay Dressed Beef, did not respond to today.com's request for comment, which, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, that seems to be the the everyday story. It, it, we, we had Clorox that wasn't wanting to name which products are going to be in short supply either. I do think it's funny. I just noticed this in real time here as we were talking about this, that this happened on the same day. Is it a coincidence? Maybe. I don't know. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments. Uh, what products are being recalled? Products that are being recalled have establishment numbers inside the USD mark of inspection, which read EST established uh, 18076. So they do give the number here, 18076. Okay, meat that was produced on August 14th, 2023. Uh, the products being recalled... Uh, come into the form of 10 pound plastic tubes or chub packs, the flavor seal packs, the tubes as we call them. It's funny they actually call them tubes on here. Um, so it's the 10 pound tubes that are affected, typically used to pack meat materials like sausages and hamburgers. Uh, the following products here are subject to recall where they do give numbers on here. I'll go over them. I wasn't originally going to go over them, but uh, we'll go over them here so that you can quickly check as fast as possible to see if yours is affected. Again, Georgia, Michigan, and Ohio. Even if you're not in Georgia, Michigan, or Ohio, I would say anywhere in the States, I would definitely check. Definitely check. Make sure that... Um, you know, you're not affected because these numbers would be different. This is 90050 Beef Fine Ground. 90050 Beef Fine Ground, 8119. 81% lean, 19% fat. That sounds like Meyer. It doesn't say Meyer, but Meyer is the only ones I know around that do the 81% lean, 19% fat in the tubes. So if you shop at Meijer, you may want to check that. Um, and it has a lot code 
of D, D as in dog, one, two, three, two, two, six, zero, two, six. Again, that is D as in dog, one, two, three, two, two, six, zero, two, six. Another one affected here, number of the beef is 20473. Beef, uh, halo fine, H-A-L-A-L, -A -L, halal fine, ground, 7327, so the 73% lean, 27% fat, with a lot number of D12322-6027. So the only number that changes in that code is the last number, which is a 7. Uh, D12322627. Now the next one on here is uh, product number 20105, beef fine ground 7327. So 73% lean again, 23% fat with lot code uh, D12326027. Uh, so the same number as the beef halal, H A L A L. Um, and then they have a picture of the different tubes on here and it says what to do if you have a product that was recalled. Okay, this is a question that we get a lot on the channel. One, um, take it back, get your money back. That'd be my first thing. But the USDA instructs distributors and other customers who have purchased impacted products to throw them out or return them to vendors. I always love how these places say to throw them out first. So just waste my money, right? Don't just throw it away, get a new one, right? I hate how, how people, uh, every time there's a recall, that's the first thing you see is throw it out, right? That's the first thing you read or return to vendors. Return it to the vendors, right? Get your money back. Don't waste your money. Don't waste your money. I understand it could be difficult for some people maybe to get back to the store or something. Maybe make a phone call. Maybe they'll send you a a rain check or not a rain check, but like a gift certificate or something. I don't know. They might just tell you to throw it away, write your name down, and then come in and get a new one, you know, whenever you get a chance. I don't know. I would definitely call. I'm sure a lot of companies are pretty good about that. They should be if they want business, if they want good business. But, you know, today's day and age, good business is kind of flying out the window, for lack of a better phrase. Consumers with questions can contact the AFG or American Foods Group, LLC's vice president of marketing and communications, I will give the phone number here so that you can call if you are affected. 1-800-829-2838. Again, that's 1-800-829-2838. Or email at info at AmericanFoodGroup.com. Um, so that's just if you have any questions, if you have any questions about it. I don't know if anybody would really have questions. If you're affected, take it back. Or call, call whichever company you got it from. Uh, and hopefully they can work with you. They probably, w if I was a business and I, I would say throw it away, I'm going to write your name down and give you a code number or something and you can come back in and get a free one. I wouldn't even want it. I wouldn't even want it back. Right. I'm sure and that could be why they put that first, but I don't know. Uh, roughly 3,000 Americans die annually from foodborne dis diseases, according to the CDC. They go on and go on about all this other stuff and information. Uh, the CDC approximately... Uh, approximates that foodborne diseases, uh, illness uh, in nearly one in six, 48 million Americans every year, and that 3,000 die. Boy, you know, numbers like that just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's a, it seems like a fairly, I, I don't really know. I, statistically, I, I don't know where they find these numbers. I don't know how they can really pinpoint these kind of numbers, especially with food. I'm sure they have their ways, but... We're going to skip all that because that's uh, information we don't really... I mean, if you want to look this up, I'm looking on today's website. So um, you can check it out here. Seeing some other websites. If you want to look at a lot more numbers, check out the USDA's website. Um, let's see. They go on to talk about other uh, illnesses that can come from hamburger and stuff. But the one they're talking about here, this is the one we want to look at. What is Shiga toxin producing E. coli? <coughs> Excuse me. According to the center CDC, different strains of E. coli can cause disease by producing Shiga toxin, uh, a biological poison. The bacteria that makes Shiga toxins are called Shiga toxin producing E. coli. Okay. 
Uh, you know, uh, let's see if we can find the... Uh, usually there's a sentence in here that usually kind of gives it away of why they're, why they're giving out all this information. Uh, let's see. What happens if you get E. coli? According to the Cleveland Clinic, um, E. coli typically exists in the intestines of people and animals and works to help digest food. However, things can get murky when different strains begin to produce toxins. So I guess there's healthy E. coli and then there's bad E. coli. Different strains of E. coli can cause non-bloody and bloody, oh Lord, I'm not gonna go into that. Okay, so I don't wanna make anybody queasy early in the morning. Uh, you can look up all the information on E. coli if you want. So now in real time, I'm gonna look up something else. One of our longtime viewers was talking about Kraft American Cheese being recalled here. Kraft Recall. We're going to look that up here together. Okay, here we go. Kraft Heinz. Uh, recall single packs, singles, the singles American cheese processed cheese slices. Now, let's see. We can read from Yahoo News, Fox News, CNN, uh, Exios, Fast Company. I don't know. I don't trust any of these, but... Um, Let's see. We'll, we'll look on. We'll, we'll see what Fox has to say. I, I go back and forth. We'll look at CNN. We'll look at Fox. I, you know, I, I'm just looking for the information and the numbers, really. Okay. The voluntary recall from Kraft uh, comes as a precaution after a temporary issue uh, developed on one of our wrapping machines, making it possible that a thin strip of individual film may remain on the slice after the wrap wrapper has been removed. Kraft said in a statement, if the film sticks to the slice and it is not removed, it could be unpleasant and potentially cause a gagging or choking hazard. So, let me, okay, <laughs> let me know. I mean, I guess I expect people to just know that, hey, check your cheese, make sure there's none of that thin plastic wrap. I'm sure all of us have taken a slice of cheese off and a piece of plastic gets stuck on it. You see the piece of plastic on there, you take the rest of it off. Right? I mean, does this warrant, like, going through the hassle of taking it back? And it may. I mean, you know, it's like you don't, definitely don't want one of your kids or something. A little, I could see a little kid, you know, ripping that plastic off real quick. And, you know, you want to be careful. And I understand them being cautious and everything. But a lot of these things, you know, some of these recalls, me personally, if it's just me eating the cheese, like, I check everything. I'm that guy that if I get a burger from a restaurant or something, I check my burger. I open up the burger, look at the cheese, look at the ingredients that I put on it. I usually ask for stuff on the side. Like if I get a burger, I'll get like lettuce, the tomato, onion, pickle, all that stuff on the side. That way I can look at it as I put it on my burger and stuff. And then I'll look at the burger and make sure it looks good. You know, do people not do that anymore? I, I don't know. It's, I feel like with all these different things going on, so much money wasted, so many things wasted, that I feel like this is something that it's like, okay, if if that's an issue and your kids are getting in the fridge all the time and you're afraid they might accidentally swallow a piece of this plastic or something, then yeah, take it back, get your money back, or or get the uh, get a different product. You know, I mean, they would be pretty quick to to give you this stuff. They go on and on and on about all this stuff of things that I don't. Me personally, okay, in my opinion, I don't feel we have to worry too much about it. You know, I, I looked this up a little bit last night on the craft. Uh, one of our longtime viewers had sent this. So it's like, you know what? And then we were getting flooded with emails on the hamburger thing. I was like, you know, cheese and hamburger. We'll talk about this all in the same video. Um, didn't really feel like this was as, as ma massive an issue, as much of an issue as the hamburger. But um, they give some codes here. Uh, individ individual package UPC uh, zero dash two one zero 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 six one five two six dash one um best best when used by date of 10th uh the 10th of january january 10th 2024 through the 27th of january 2024 so if it's if you have cheese the craft singles that are between the dates of january 10th and january 27th of 2024 you may want to return them and just get a new package at your convenience. I, I don't know if, like me personally, okay, in my opinion, I don't know if I would. 
Now, if, you know, thinking like, well, is there something else wrong with it? Don't know that. They don't say that. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's just a piece of plastic that's sticking to the cheese. Uh, but at the same time, yeah, I don't know. I'm in and out of the stores all the time. I would probably take it back and just get a different one. Because, um, yeah, you don't even want to have to deal with that hassle. Uh, but I understand everybody can't get to the store all the time. Some people don't drive. Some people don't have transportation. So um, I would just be very, very be careful of that, you know. Um, and again, this is an opinionated discussion just because I would keep it and maybe not worry about it doesn't mean you should, uh, especially if you have children getting in and out of the fridge and grabbing that slice of cheese and not really thinking about it. I would definitely be concerned then. Um, and that's all they go on to talk about with the, with the cheese. But I do want to kind of elaborate on a couple of these things because we're having these things happen on a daily basis. We're having so many recalls. Who can remember over the last couple years having this many recalls from baby formula to peanut butter to different jams and jellies i mean i know there's recalls all the time but never like this massive Fifty-eight thousand pounds of hamburger and and your lab or whatever tested positive for e coli or, or the sh uh the bad poison of the e coli right it's like you have to assume that all of this could be contaminated Right? I get it. Take it, you know, get it off the shelf as quick as you can. All these things are having so many recalls. We have companies that are uh, going to be in very short supply. We're talking about shortages on a daily basis here. Um, and, you know, I know a lot of people are leaving comments saying your stores are packed. That is awesome. If, you're, if your stores are getting in all the products, that is great. And let me reiterate that when I say food shortages, I don't mean we're out of food. I mean, there are some products that aren't coming in for whatever reason. Right, if it's pasta, if it's if it's flour, or sugar, it could be ingredients, it could be it could be the transportation, uh, whatever that may be. By train, right? We have all these train derailments, so a lot of this is is affected by that as well. Um, all kinds of different transportation issues around the country here that just seems to keep mounting in problems. And I gotta say, it really does start to, it, you know. It's like, it's where you may not be affected, others are. So we have to we have to talk about these things nonetheless for all of our viewers who are affected. Um, somebody left me a comment the other day saying that all of their stores in South Carolina are completely full. Well, I, you're just one person. You may live in a different town, but we've, we've recently been getting hundreds of comments and emails from people in South Carolina that are having issues. Uh, of, of visible proof photographs you know which I don't put on this channel I will not use people's personal information toward me to use as documentation of things that are going on I know that I can but I'm not going to do that because people email me because that is a little more private right you don't want to put that in a comment on the channel I understand that your privacy you know that kind of thing I, I completely understand but what happens in one town may be completely different on the other side of town. I know as for Cincinnati, we may not have it as good as people in like northern Cincinnati. You know, they may not they may be getting all kinds of products that we're not. We see that in a lot of different Kroger's as well. What Kroger in southern Cincinnati may be getting a whole different line of products that northern Cincinnati may not be getting. Kroger and most stores who do their research, they know what's being bought in certain stores. Like there's a Kroger that's just south of us that sells a lot of like world foods, different like, um, you know, different uh, soy sauces and different, uh, different kinds of like ramen noodles, special ramen, you know, expensive ramen really, um, and, and different things, a lot more world foods in some Kroger's than others, you know, so everywhere's a little different. So we have to take that into consideration. And, and again, I'm just mentioning this because we get comments on this from time to time. People say, well, our stores are full. Doesn't mean all of South Carolina is full here. You know, we're, we're getting, you know, when I'm getting a lot, when I do a video solely on one state that is having issues, then that tells you that there's a lot of people that are seeing things in a state. And this is to prepare you right? This is to prepare you who has everything in your store to watch for what's coming. Watch to see if these things start going off the shelf so that you can be a little prepared. If you have this stuff, great. Good time to stock up on it before it goes away. Because one thing, you know, we're having several things that we are starting to see 
that are that are happening around the country. Pasta being one of them. Meat. Meat is kind of a new one. We're starting to see shortages of meat. We said we would. We've yeah, and I understand we have a lot of new viewers on the channel here. But we said because of these high prices, we're gonna start seeing shortages for a couple reasons. One, a lot of people probably aren't buying this really expensive meat. It doesn't last forever. You're gonna to have to pitch it or give it to somebody, give it away, you know, and it's like as we go along here for all the farmers that had to that had to uh, take out their herd, right? Because they're they're trying to make ends meet too because of all the different ingredients and feed and all that stuff that has gone up in price. You know, they have to make ends meet too. Uh, no pun intended. <laughs> but um, you know, farmers are really hurting right now. So they're, they're having to do things that they normally wouldn't do, therefore causing a sh prices to skyrocket, which they are right now, here soon. You know, and it looks like it's starting to happen. Someone in Wisconsin just commented the other day, one of our longtime viewers, saying that they're seeing so a lot of different shortages on meat products. Well, that's one place. We've seen it in Ohio, not as much as we did last year or a couple years ago. But it's still, it's not as much as it's been, and rightfully so, because it is very expensive. Less and less people can afford to buy it. Therefore, it's going to sit there until they have to pitch it. And then here we are. Here we are. We're going to be in, a, in a, a place of where we're not even going to be able to get it at one point because it's, it's going to be gone. The, the, the prices are getting so expensive because of the shortages that are coming. We say this with sugar, any kind of grains, rice, anything. Rice is going to start going up. Um, it already has in some states. California, a lot of people have chimed in saying rice is getting pretty expensive. Why is that? Because there are shortages. And when we have, may not be shortages of the kind of rice that you usually get at the store, which we get comments on from time to time. But when people can't get that kind, they're going to buy the other kind, and that's going to cause the massive shortage that hopefully we don't see over the winter here. But it's good to be prepared nonetheless. Guys, thank you so much for watching this today. I really wanted to discuss this uh, meat. 58,000 pounds of meat is no joke, and to have that kind of contamination, you definitely want to be careful. So if you have to rewind the video to get those numbers, or you, we were looking on today's website, that's where they had all those numbers. But... The, USD, the USDA website does have everything in a nice list, just not a lot of the different, um, a lot of the different information. It just kind of goes into the numbers, which I like, but it's hard to just talk about numbers and talk about all this stuff. So I wanted to read from today's website, so you can check that out if you wish, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.